In urban play areas, the presence of green natural elements can be one of the few opportunities for children to contact with nature and benefit from its presence. Scientific evidence shows that contact with nature or natural green elements has an effect on inclusion and health. Different studies have shown that the presence of green areas help social cohesion and stress reduction. Nearby green space, also known as vitamin G, may have a stronger link with mental health and social interaction than with physical activity levels. Whereas vitamin G deficits, so no use of green spaces, can cause seasonal affective disorder, as it limits vitamin D production, disturbs the circadian rhythm and causes insomnia. The, the correlation between access to green spaces in childhood and emotions, attitudes and behaviors in adulthood has been demonstrated. A positive attitude towards nature is developed in childhood and will more likely lead to adults caring for environment and nature protection. So, which roles can vegetation play and how? Vegetation can have many functions, not only as play elements, but also providing for separation and boundaries, shade, urban furniture, among others. Nature literally gives life to public space and contributes to harmony and a more inclusive and human-friendly environment. One of the functions of vegetation in promoting inclusion and well-being lies in its rich sensory stimulation. Smell, sound, texture, sight, with colors and shapes, and even taste, if you have edible plants, like orange or apple trees. Some fruits may also be suitable for play. Plants can give shelter or attract different kinds of animals, even in the city. Bees, butterflies, birds, squirrels. They can have thorns, be smooth, harsh, fragrant. So who doesn't love the touch and smell of grass, freshly cut, or to lie down, sit, roll, or even better, roll down a slope. Or grass just to hang out and to socialize, whatever the age or ability. Nature is a real banquet for the senses. The provision of shade will also encourage social gatherings outdoor group activities or naps, picnics, to provide for shade in play areas. At design stage, some risk management issues should be considered. Plants and trees need to be strategically chosen and cited, considering, considering the dynamics of the area and how they will develop, in which direction, growth speed, maintenance needs, are they evergreen or deciduous for more light and warmth in the winter and shade in the summer? Falling leaves can be a stimuli for the senses and have a great play value, but they can also be challenging for maintenance of play areas. The existing plants should be carefully studied to make the best out of what exists, whilst producing shades or boundaries how to integrate a play area in existing natural environments. Vegetation can also be used for separation, circulation and orientation, to create boundaries and coziness, or as a barrier to damp noise and air pollution, or protect from the wind. It can be used as a fence, or to cover or hide an ugly fence to separate and limit different areas, for instance, with different risk levels or different activities, different target groups. Vegetation can also be used as urban furniture. Tree trunks can be used as benches or picnic tables and also act as play elements, creating labyrinths, adventure, wilderness, the possibility to hide, to get lost, but also for climbing. And in this case, it is very important to monitor the sanitary status of the tree for safe use in public spaces. Tree trunks are also used for balance, or wood for shelters, tunnels, 
there are many possibilities. In the choice of plants, there are some criteria to consider for risk management purposes. Which function do we want to achieve? Which hazards or risks could emerge? How will the bushes or the trees grow? In which direction? Vertical? Or is there a risk of spreading into safety zones? At which speed do they grow? How long will it take to produce a shade? What is the impact on visibility, sight lines, creation of hidden spots? Well, sometimes hidden spots may be desirable for play, but they could also have other consequences, like encouraging vandalism, assault, and altering the sense of safety. Another issue is toxicity. Avoid highly toxic plants if swallowed by children in small portions. But remember that all plants can be poisonous at some point. Checklists can be risky as they can exclude some species that are not local. If in doubt, check with your local poison information center before choosing. In any case, a vegetation maintenance plan should be provided by designers to be included in the operator's risk management system for a specific play area.